at salons too. That's amazing. It's amazing, folks. We're here at the tomb of Absalom. You need to stand back a little further, Heidi. Be careful, there's an ancient tombstone. Matter of fact, show them that while you're back up. There's an ancient tombstone. I mean, it's been here a long time, and it just it happens to be laying here. And there, of course, the uh, we're in the Kidron Valley. We're in the Kidron Valley. Right over here is the Golden Gate, or the Eastern Gate of the Wall of Jerusalem. So I want you to know where we're at. Uh, right over here is the Mount of Olives. Right up there, you see the Mount of Olives. And of course, there's, I don't think you can see the cemetery, but there's this cemetery, Jewish cemetery, uh, where 144,000 are buried. They've added a few more, extended it later. And we're at the tomb of Absalom, like Heidi said just a second ago. Who's Absalom? He is the King David's son. I mean, in a, a miraculous character in the Bible. Uh, his sister Tamar was raped by his brother uh, Ammon, or Ammon, and um, after she was raped, and she was tricked by Ammon, Ammon pretended to be sick, asked that his, his sister Tamar come to him to help him, and he raped her there. Uh, but he was, and so when the word got to Absalom, what happened? Absalom was furious with his brother, and it says that uh, in verse in Second Samuel chapter thirteen, verse twenty-eight, it says Absalom commanded his servants, saying, "Mark ye now when Ammon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Ammon, then kill him. Fear not, have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be." valent and the servants of Absalom did unto Ammon as Absalom commanded then all the king's sons arose and every man uh, got him upon his mule and they fled so uh, King David finds out that Absalom kills Ammon but there's a there's a reason for it what happened to Tamar what about Tamar she had her robe she was a virgin she had her robe of royalty she was so upset, she tore her robe. And, uh, uh, you know, she, she sat idle, basically. She was, she was told by Absalom to not speak a word. And she sat quietly from then on. Uh, you know, that was, a, that was the way that ended in that part of it. But what about Absalom? Well, Absalom becomes a ma major character in the Bible. And uh, later in the stories in the Bible in 2 Samuel, you'll find that there's an, a rebellion that comes up. They're trying to kill King David. They're trying to kill his son Absalom. Absalom and his men are going through an, uh, an area where there's a lot of thicket, uh, low-hanging trees. And, and Absalom had long hair. He had uh, a Nazareth vow. But he, he, as he was going, he was riding a mule. And that mule went under these trees and his long hair got hung in the branches. He hung him up. The mule went on and left him hanging uh, in, the, uh, in the tree with, in his hair. And uh, he ends up dying there. A man comes and takes a dart, drives him through him. He dies there. And this is where he's buried, here in the Kidron Valley. Absalom's tomb. Now, what's really cool is that I've always drove by here, you know, and they, uh, everybody will always say, there's the tomb of Absalom, and they just keep on going. But uh, Heidi and I today decided to do a little exploring here, and we, we've worked our way into the Kidron, right up here to the tomb of Absalom. It's an amazing, amazing story. Heidi, is there is there more about this story with Absalom and, and, and Ammon uh, and Tamar? Um, well, Tamar, as you said, was raped um, by her own brother, and then she uh, ripped her royal robe that was only given to a virgin king's daughter, went out into the street, put sackcloth and ashes on her head, and she was just crying and crying and crying, and Absalom is the brother who came out to her, picked her up out of the street, kept her in his home, 
for the rest of her days, but he told her, shh, be quiet. You cannot speak about this. And she remained in desolation, just like so many women do today that have had horrible things happen to them and they're told just to keep quiet, keep it in the family, don't make a scene. Right. And she was not allowed to heal. Yeah. And the same with Absalom, he kept hate in his heart until he got his chance to get his revenge for Ammon. And he did. And that was the destruction of Absalom as well. See, so, you know, because the Bible tells us, dare not touch the Lord's anointed or, and, uh, or do his prophets no harm. So by concealing the matter or by telling her, shh, be quiet, she spends the rest of her life in... Desolation, the yeah, Bible says. And, and in pain and emotional scarred. And she can't be uh, the beautiful king's daughter that she should be. Right. And Absalom spends his life hunting down his brother, having him killed, and then facing his own tragic death because uh, of what he did. Uh, it's just a great story. It's a great story. And to think that the king of Israel, King David, that his son is buried right here. The biblical Absalom is pretty uh, remarkable to be here in Israel, right here in the Kidron Valley. I'm Pastor Paul, baby. Are you safe? Let me ask you a question. Are you safe? Why am I here? Can I just say this? Prophetically, I don't know if there could be a more prophetic spot than to be on the foothills of the Mount of Olives and the Eastern Gate and cemetery with all these folks waiting on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to split that eat that Mount of Olives. He's going to split it in half. Where I'm standing, where there will be a tsunami of water that will come rushing from the former sea to the hinder sea. This earthquake is going to literally open up the fountains of the earth of water, okay? But it will be for healing of the of the uh, land. Unbelievable, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, here at Absalom's tomb. Could happen today.